Are we are we ready? No. All right. Okay. Om Magyan. Okay, you. I'll chant prayers first, and then you can translate my lecture. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sahajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrinda Vineshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasate Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Are you, are you able to hear me okay? Oh, you can't see me. Eh? You want me to open the video? Okay. Now, you can see me. Hare Krishna. All right. So, today we are having the initiation ceremony of one of the devotees there in Kamchatka. Initiation into Krishna Consciousness is part of the process of Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is the, the process by which we develop our love and devotion for the Supreme Lord. And the initiation is the time when the, the candidate uh, makes vows before the assembly of devotees and before the deities. They make vows to follow the principles of Krishna Consciousness. In Krishna Consciousness, 
we follow scriptures, ancient scriptures which come from India, which are 5,000 years old and which were written originally in Sanskrit. So, in, in, the, in the literatures of the Vedas, it describes the process of religion is based on cultivating four qualities. First one is cleanliness. We all appreciate the importance of cleanliness, especially at this time when there is a COVID virus going around. All over the world, people are paying attention to cleanliness, to washing their hands and uh, sing, uh, purifying their hands and keeping everything very clean to protect themselves from the virus. So in this modern age, cleanliness is dis destroyed by illicit connection with the opposite sex. Of course, we are not against people getting married, men and women entering into family life. That is very good. But we are against illicit, illicit connection. Illicit connection means outside of marriage, simply for the pleasure, simply for the satisfaction of the body, without taking any responsibility. So all of our members in Krishna consciousness, they make a vow to, to not to get involved in illicit connections with the opposite sex. Then the second principle is mercy. We all need to be mercy, merciful. We need to be kind and caring for others. But often our vision of compassion is very limited. We simply think and care about our own self or about our own family. So in Krishna Consciousness, we're encouraged to show mercy to all forms of life. Therefore, the members of the Krishna Consciousness Society are strictly vegetarian. They don't eat any animal foods. So no meat, no fish, no eggs, because these are, these are forms of life. Then the third quality is austerity, that we all need to practice some, kinds of, some kind of austerity because it purifies us. Austerity, some people have the wrong, the wrong idea of austerity. They think austerity means torturing the body, like fasting or doing 
terrible things, taking things in the body, giving yourself pain, that, that is not necessary. The, uh, in, our, in Krishna consciousness, we practice austerity by giving up all forms of intoxication. For example, alcohol and drugs. The members of the Krishna consciousness movement don't even take tea and coffee because these things have caffeine and they're also a drug. Austerity means also to develop humility. Austerity is destroyed by pride. And we know in this age people can be very proud. So then so in Krishna consciousness we like we encourage people to develop humility and to be to be without pride. And then the fourth principle is truthfulness, that we should be very careful to speak the truth, not to lie, not to cheat, but to be honest. So the religious principles are based on these four, thing, four qualities, cleanliness, Mercy, austerity, truthfulness. These are all qualities which are defined for us in the scriptures. So, in order to help us cultivate, cultivate these qualities, it's very important for us to also chant regularly the Hare Krishna mantra. So, devotee taking initiation, they have to promise also that they will daily chant 16 rounds of the Maha Mantra. So you will see devotees, they carry their bead bag, they have a bag with the beads in it, and every day they chant on these beads. So the chanting of the Maha Mantra is very important and very powerful because it takes away sinful reactions from us. Of, of course, there are some qualities in the chanting of the Holy Name. There are some rules to be followed. The first rule is that we should not blaspheme, or we should not, we should not criticize any other devotee. We should have nice, friendly relationships with each other.
this age, in our scriptures, this age is called the age of quarrel. Everywhere people are arguing and quarreling with each other. Even in the home, in the family, there is fighting. People are not peaceful. But by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, people can change their life. They can become peaceful and happy. So that the first offense, the first rule is not to criticize anyone, but we encourage devotees see the good in other people and see faults in ourselves. We should be like a bee. The bee always goes to, the, to take the honey from the flower. Don't be like flies. Flies, they always go to the dirty place. So it's a good idea to try to always see good in others and to appreciate them. Then the second rule is to consider names of demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. So I know in Russia, many people in Russia, they're familiar with other gods from India, like Shiva and Ganesh and Durga, but we should understand these gods are not on the same level as Vishnu or Krishna. Lord Shiva himself described that 1,000 names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Lord Brahma. One. Lord Shiva told his wife, 1,000 1, names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Lord Brahma. And three names of Lord Vishnu is equal to the one name of Lord Krishna. So, how many names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Krishna? Oh, Russian people are very good in arithmetic. Yes, 3,000, very good. So, uh, we can understand the name of Lord Krishna is very powerful. Then the third, the third rule, the third rule or offense is to disobey the order of the spiritual teacher. So we all have a common relationship with the founder of the Krishna consciousness movement, 
The founder of the Krishna Consciousness Movement is Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. I, I am a disciple of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He gave me initiation. I was initiated in London, in the UK, in 1971. So Srila Prabhupada told us we should try to distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere. So for many years now I have been coming, I have come regularly to Kamchatka. Of course, this year is very special. I cannot come this year. But we're having the initiation by means of the, the internet. So, spiritual master is the, the instructions which we get from Prabhupada are very important for us. And he instructs all of us, follow the principles of Krishna consciousness, the four principles, cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthful. And he instructs us every day, chant 16 rounds of the Maha Mantra. So we must try to follow his teachings faithfully. Just, for, just like if, if you are sick, if you have a disease, then you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you medicine, you have to take the medicine according to his direction. The doctor gives the medicine, he knows what the disease is, he knows how to cure it, he gives the proper medicine, and he tells you how much, when to take the medicine and how many times to take. And then doctor may also give you diet, he may give you special diet because of the disease. So Srila, Pra Srila Prabhupada gave us the medicine in the form of the chanting of the Maha Mantra. And he told us, chant 16 rounds of the Maha Mantra every day. And he gave us also diet. He said, you must eat food offered to Krishna. And Krishna is a vegetarian. So we are also vegetarian. We don't eat anything not offered to Krishna. Then the fourth rule is to blaspheme Vedic literature or any literature in pursuance of the Vedic version.
So this rule means we have to read the books every, regularly. Books like Bhagavad Gita, we have to read regularly. Do all of you, have all of you seen the Bhagavad Gita? Yes? Are you reading it? Have you read the whole book? Have, have you learned any of the verses, any of the sloka from the Bhagavad Gita? Okay, very, very good. Next time, next time I come there, or next time I meet you, I want to hear you recite the sloka. Yeah, all of our devotees all over the world, they learn to recite the verses. Even, you know, I go to China, and in China also, the people in China, they're also learning to recite the verse, the sloka from Bhagavad Gita. Yes? Memorize, to memorize. So I know Rus Russian people, their, uh, their language is nearer to Sanskrit than Chinese. So I think it's easier for you to learn the Sanskrit. So we have to read the books. Prabhupada wrote many books. And you should want to try to read all of the books of Prabhupada. So Bhagavad Gita, who knows how, ma how many chapters in the Bhagavad Gita? Yes, good, 18. So if you read one chapter a day, then it will take you 18 days to read the whole Bhagavad Gita. And how many sloka in the Bhagavad Gita? Yes, right, 700. So if you read one sloka a day, then within two years you can finish whole Bhagavad Gita. So this way you can, you can use your time, you, you can use your time to learn, to get good knowledge from the Bhagavad Gita. So then the fifth offense is to consider chanting of, glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination. We may hear from that one time chanting Hare Krishna can destroy all of our sins from past lives.
So we may think, oh no, I don't believe it, I can't think Hare Krishna name can be so powerful. So that is an offence. If you doubt the power of the holy name, that's not good. We have to, we should know the chanting of Hare Krishna is very powerful. But there is qu quality in chanting and we have to chant the holy name with quality. Quality means of, of, avoiding offences. So then the sixth offence is to, uh, to give some interpretation of the holy name. The word Krishna can mean many different things. The word Krishna can mean black, it can mean all attractive, it has many meanings. So we may think, oh the word Krishna means black, so black is something which very dark, very strange, something which cannot be known. So we may think Krishna means somebody which cannot be known. So this is wrong. So don't interpret the holy name, just try to understand the holy name based on the teachings of the saintly teachers. Just, just try to understand on the basis of the teachers, the saintly teachers who taught us the holy name. Then the seventh offence is to commit sin on the strength of chanting the holy name. One may, one may think, well, tonight I am invited to a party. I will go to the party and I will drink some alcohol and maybe we will take some drugs. Anyway, tomorrow I will chant Hare Krishna to make up for it. So this is very bad. This is an offence. So, we, uh, that is just like if you build a fire and you put water on the fire. You're trying to build the fire, but then you throw water on the fire. So when you throw water on the fire, you put the fire out. It is also compared to the bathing of an elephant. When the elephant takes bath, after they take a bath, they throw dirt on their body. So the same way, we should not try to use the holy name to engage in sinful activities. Then the number eight rule 
is to consider chanting Hare Krishna as one of the auspicious activities offered in the Vedas as fruit of activity, karma kanda. We do not chant Hare Krishna just simply to get some material benefit. We chant Hare Krishna for the pleasure of Krishna. Then the ninth offense is to inst instruct faithless people about the holy name. So we're careful about who we allow, who we instruct in the chanting of the holy name. First of all, the people should have faith. If people don't have faith in the holy name, then they will not understand the nature of Lord Krishna and the nature of these spiritual activities. So, first of all, we want people to develop some faith, and they develop faith by chanting, by taking part in the kirtan, and by hearing about Krishna. They have to, they have to hear the basic knowledge from the Bhagavad Gita. They have to learn that we're not the body, that we're all souls. And we have to learn of the importance of controlling the mind and the senses. Then gradually people develop faith and we can instruct them more. Then the final, the final rule is not to have complete faith in chanting Hare Krishna and to maintain material attachment. So it's very important to let go of our attachments to the material world. So initiation is meant for people who are determined to give up their connection, their attachment to material world. Srila Prabhupada compared it, he said, it's like a declaring war, making a war on illusion, on the maya of the material world. And the war, we, we, we fight by chanting the Maha Mantra, by distributing Krishna Consciousness. So we're very glad Krishna Consciousness has come to Kamchatka and you have a nice center there now and devotees are there. It's a very great blessing for Kamchatka. It certainly brings auspiciousness, it creates good fortune for people, it's something of value. It gives people a better life because it gives them 
proper education about the real purpose of life. So we encourage all of you who are here today attending this program, we encourage all of you to chant the Maha Mantra and to read Srila Prabhupada's books. I came to this Krishna, I came to this Krishna consciousness movement uh, by reading one of the books. The books have wonderful spiritual knowledge to help us to understand the nature of life and the purpose of life and how to fulfill that purpose of life. It's unfortunate that we all live in so much ignorance about the purpose of life. But by chanting Hare Krishna, we can awaken a real spiritual identity. So initiation is like taking birth in spiritual, into spiritual activity. In the material world, everyone has a mother and a father. That is true for every living entity, even the dogs and the, and the bears, they all have a mother and father. But only the, fortune, the, the fortunate person, they have spiritual teacher and by the grace of the spiritual teacher, they get Krishna. So from Bhagavad Gita we learn we are all part of Krishna and we have an eternal relationship with him. So we invite all of you to also try to understand more about this Krishna consciousness movement. Take part in the programs at the center there regularly. Are there any questions? Well, they have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. What should you start with? I'm not following, Christina. What happened? Yes? The 
So, so you should start. You should start with your doubts. What are your doubts? What are your problems? He has a doubt about it? He's what? He really what? I can't hear. He doubts. Well, why should you doubt? So many others have achieved Krishna in this life. Why should you not? Srila Sh Prabhupada de described, he said how the mother of one devotee was dying, she was leaving the body, and the devotee was there with his mother at the time, when the mother was leaving the body, and his mother was asking him about Krishna when she was leaving the body. Yeah, the woman was dying, but she was asking about Krishna. It's very good. It meant in her next life she would have a very, very good birth, or maybe even she'd go back to Godhead. And she wasn't a devotee. Only it was her son who was the devotee. So this is just one example of how people can get so much mercy by the grace of Krishna. If you follow the process, then certainly you will go back to Godhead. You have to follow properly. We have to take shelter of Srila Prabhupada's teachings. So if you, are if you are strict, if you are faithful, certainly you will be successful. So you have to gradually, you have, you, have, you have to improve, you have to come, become more strict. Whatever progress you make in this life, you'll go on in the next life. Whatever service you do in this life, it will be for your eternal benefit. So you don't need to doubt.
Yes, we have to balance. We have to balance material and spiritual. Just like a train goes on two tracks, so the same way you need you need to have material. You have to have your material responsibilities, material duties, your business. You have to have also some spiritual aspect to your life. There has to be a balance between the two. If you simply go on the material, if everything is just based on material, only on your business, you're only thinking about money, then you'll always be in anxiety, you'll never be happy, and you'll never achieve any purpose in life. And we don't encourage people to give up the material prematurely. We encourage people to keep a balance, material and spiritual. You have to have some home, you have to have some income, you have to have some wealth to maintain yourselves. But there has to be also some spiritual aspect in your life. And that this is the purpose of Krishna Consciousness. How to live in this world. We don't just try to solve only, only the economic problems. Life is not meant for only eating and sleeping and mating and defending. Human life is a big responsibility. We have the opportunity to inquire, to understand who I am. We have to understand we are all souls, we are not bodies, we are souls, we are living in the body. And the body is temporary, but the soul is eternal. The problem of life is not only eating and sleeping, we have a problem about birth and death. We all have to die one day. The body is temporary and our soul will leave this body and will take another body. Where do, where do you want to take your next birth? You have to think about that. So we want to solve that problem of birth and death. Not only just the problem of eating and sleeping, but the problem of taking birth and dying. Now, now we have the human body, but if in the next life you become a bear, it's not very good.
So yes, do your business, but at the same time also chant Hare Krishna and study Bhagavad Gita. Any other question? There's no offense in, in giving the holy name, in chanting the holy name. The offense is to tell too much about the power of the holy name. But we can tell every, everyone to chant Hare Krishna, everyone, we invite everyone to chant Hare Krishna. We tell, we tell everyone, you're not the body, you're a soul. Control your mind, control your senses. So giving that kind of information, there's no offence. But we don't tell them all the intimate powers of the Holy Name, how the Holy Name can destroy sinful reactions. We don't tell people about Krishna and the gopis and Rasa Leela. We don't tell these things. We give everyone the holy name, we give them mantra cards, that's very nice, give them a mantra card, let them see the mantra, tell them to chant, tell them it will make, you'll be happy, you'll benefit by chanting. And they may say, what benefit will I get by chanting? You awaken the soul. You understand you're not the body, you're a soul. So we can give that kind of knowledge everywhere. Ishwari has a question.
have a lot of false ego. Is it? What? What's that one? Okay. <laughs> Difficult to practice. Well, the, the situation is still the same. It's not that, it, not that it became more difficult. It's the same situation. We're, we're, think, we're thinking it more difficult. It's the, the mind. Because with initiation you, you've made a commitment. So before initiation you hadn't made any commitment, so you didn't worry about it. But now after initiation you make a commitment, so it seems like more, more stress. So this is why we, people are not initiated immediately, they wait for some time before initiation, they practice for some time, make sure that they can do everything, they can follow everything, and then after, some, you know, after the probation period, after waiting for some time, then they're ready for initiation. Of course, sometimes Maya will test you. Maya will test you. Oh, you really want to be a devotee? And so Maya's job is to try to keep us in the material world. Maya is saying, why you, why you leave me? Why are you going to Krishna? Just stay with me. I can give you a real miserable, I'll make your life really miserable. But if we're determined to go to Krishna, then we will, we will, we will not be attracted, we will not be bewildered by Maya, we will not be troubled by Maya. As soon as we take shelter of Krishna, then all the difficulties fall away. Just like the, dark, the darkness is always removed as soon as the sun comes out. So the same way, in the presence of Krishna, there can be no maya. Maya is ashamed to come before Krishna. So the, these difficulties often appear within our mind. We're thinking, in our mind we're thinking difficulty. But if we just take shelter of Krishna, we'll see there's no real difficulty. Just, we just have to call out to Krishna and immediately Krishna will come and all the difficulties are gone. These, when we think of difficulties, just our mind, our mind is thinking difficulty. We have to control the mind 
And the way to control the mind? To think of Krishna. So you have to control the mind. The mind is a friend, the mind can be the enemy. If you're, if you're thinking, oh, difficulty, so many troubles, this is the mind. But if we remember Krishna, then all these difficulties will just go away. You just have to hold on to Krishna. Krishna consciousness is not so difficult. But in our mind we're thinking, oh, difficult. Before initiation there was no difficulty. Why after initiation difficult? The same situation, the same place, the same people. The, but the mind thinks, oh, difficulty. Difficult. Prabhupada gives the example. Just like in the summertime, we can take bath, we don't mind the cold water. But in the winter time, the water is cold, oh, we feel, oh, it's so cold, oh. It's the same water, the same temperature, but the body is reacting differently. So we have to, we have to learn to just control the mind. And we do that by loud chanting of the holy name, calling out the holy name, then you can get control over the mind. So it's practice. Pra just like in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, Arjuna, or Krishna was telling Arjuna to do yoga and to meditate and to control the mind. And Arjuna said, oh, I can't do it. My mind is restless. My mind is like the wind. But Krishna said, I know it's difficult, but it's possible by practice. So we have to practice and also detachment is also required. We have to let go. Let go of Maya. Hold on to Krishna. Right? If we're going to really hold on to, we want Krishna, we have to let go of Maya first to hold on to Krishna. There's a story about the bear. The bear was coming and he saw there was one cottage and outside the cottage there was a plate with apples on it. And the bear went and he got the apple.
So the bear had the one took one apple and he he went to bite it, but it was plastic. It was not a real apple. But he didn't want to let go. He wanted to keep it in his hand. He went fur further along the road, along the path, and there was a tree full of apples, big apples growing on the tree. But he's holding the plastic apple in his hand. He doesn't want to let go of the plastic apple. So we're like that. We're holding on to the illusion. We have to let go of the illusion and hold on to the reality. So this is Krishna consciousness. To wake us up out of the ignorance, out of the illusion. To understand ourselves as spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. So you tell Umapati all this. Hare Krishna. What? Request, yeah. What? I'm not hearing, not clear. All for your son? Okay, that, that's afterwards. We have to give you a name first, right? Okay. So, first of all, we have to ask Christina, what are the four regulative principles? And if Sorry? No, it's okay. All right. I'm sorry. And how many rounds? Did you say how many rounds you're going to chant every day? Okay. So we will give you a name Kirti da Devi Dasi. Do you know who is do you know who is Kirti Da? Kirti Da is the name of Radharani's mother. Okay. Kirti da Devi Dasi ki jai. Okay, so you can do the yakya now. Oh, wait. Where is her son? Where is Christina's son?
What? What's your son's name? What's your son's name? Huh? Hare Krishna. What's his name? Russian name? No relation. Okay, I give him the I give him the name Nakula. Nakula. What one of the one of the Pandavas, one of the five Pandavas. Nakula Prabhu ki. <laughs> Possible. <huh? laughs> I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, please. Oh yeah, very nice. Okay. Very good. Nice. Many flowers. Very good. Yes, go ahead. Start. <laughs> 